Hi guys, welcome in the next part of my JavaScript tutorial series. Today we will be talking about loops. So loops allow us to repeat some block of code a specified number of times. I will introduce you today three different types of loops. And the first one will be for loop. After this we will cover while loop. And the last one will be do while loop so let's say we want to display numbers from 0 to 4 normally if we don't know loops we will have to do something like this type console log and display 0 and then console log display 1 and we will have to do it again and again and again to display all numbers we want just like this if we save and refresh, we have all our numbers. Instead of displaying values from 0 to 4 one by one using console log, we can use for loop. To use for loop, we use for statement and two parentheses. And between parentheses, we have to define three things. First one is counter, so let's create a new variable called i which stands for iterator and it is common, very common practice to call this like that but you can use whatever name you want and we want to count from 0 so we are assigning value of 0 to our counter after this we have to define condition so we want to execute our code inside for loop as long as our counter is less than 5 because we want the numbers from 0 to 4 and last thing we have to do is define uh, is to define how we want to increase our counter so we want to increase by 1 and we can do this like that or we can use shorthand and use something like this so this means we will in each iterator, iteration, increase iterator by one. Last thing we have to do is define the body of our for loop. So we want to display value of our counter in the console. So let's save it. Let's comment out this line of code. And as you can see, when I refresh, we got exactly the same values as we get using console logs. Okay, so now I want to show you how you can keep track of execution of your code. So to do this, we have to go to the web browser and select sources tab. If you don't see sources tab, go to these two arrows and expand them. And the tab should be somewhere over here. Okay, so let's back to the sources tab and select uh, your script file from the menu on the left and as you can see the script over here is exactly the same what we have in our editor so now to debug our for loop we have to set the breakpoint by clicking on the line number so let's set the breakpoint over here Okay, so now we can keep track of execution of our for loop. So let's refresh the site. And as you can see, the execution of our for loop has been stopped. And we are on the step where we are assigning zero to our counter. Now it is undefined. But if we go to the next step by clicking this button over here, now we can see that our counter has value of 0 and in the next step we are checking if 0 is less than 5. It is of course true, so in the next step we are displaying value of our counter to the console. So let's go to the next step and let's check the console and it's 0. Let's go back to the sources tab and now on this step over here we are increasing value of counter by 1 and in the next step 
we are checking if one is less than five. It is of course true, so we are displaying the value. And if we check the console, here is one. Okay, so now let's take a few steps forward. And now we are checking if four is less than five. It is of course true, so we are displaying the value to the console again. And as you can see, we have all numbers we need. And now we are increasing counter again by one. And we are checking if five is less than five. It is of course false. So we are stopping execution of our for loop. And this is pretty much all you need to know about debugging your scripts in the web browser. So now I want to show you how you can display values from the arrays using loops. So let's create a new array, for example, numbers, and it will hold numbers like 22, 30, 1999, 1, 78 and for example 190 let's create new for loop and inside let's create new counter which one we set to zero because arrays are indexed from zero not from one if we set our counter to one we will lose first value from the array now we have to define condition so we want to execute code in our for loop as long as our counter is less than length of our array. So to get length of our array, we use the name of our array and the length property. And after this, we are increasing our counter by one. Okay, so now let's display values from the array to the console so console log name of our array square brackets between square brackets we use name of our counter in this case it is i and let's comment out this code let's save let's refresh now and as you can see we have all numbers we have in our array next loop i want to show you is the while loop but to use while loop we will need another variable so let's create new variable let's say iterator and let's set it to one now to use while loop we need to use while statement and between parentheses just like in the for loop we have to define the condition so we want to execute our loop as long as our iterator is less than 11. And after this, we have to define the body of our loop. So we want to display the value of our iterator by passing its name. And after this, we, it is very important to increase our iterator. If we don't do this, our loop will be infinite. Okay, so now let's comment out this code, save it, go to the web browser, refresh. And as you can see, we got all numbers between 1 and 10. Last loop. I want to show you in this video is the while loop and just like in while loop we will need new variable for example counter and let's set it to zero after this we have to use do statement and define the body of our loop so in the loop we want to display value of our counter and after this we want to increase our counter by one it is very important because otherwise our loop will be infinite and it can cause some problems and at the end we have to use 
while statement and define the condition so we want to execute code in our loop as long as counter is less than 5 and now let's comment out this code let's save refresh and as you can see we got the numbers from 0 to 4 those two loops looks pretty much the same but they differ from each other because while loop is checking condition at the beginning before executing any code and in do while loop condition is checked at the end after first execution of the code so we can be sure that do while will be executed at least one time when while will not if condition is not fulfilled there are also loops like for in and for off and also for each for arrays but they are a little off scope of this course and i will try to explain them other time and this is all for today i hope you learned something new and see you next time